So thank you guys for joining with this Get to Know session. It's Get to Know OU Tulsa Student Counseling Services. And uh, we actually have a few uh, d different ones from actually two from the our HSC campus uh, and then also accompanying Taylor Collins, who is the new student counselor on the OU Tulsa campus. So uh, from what I'm aware, he has hit the ground running and you guys have kept him busy. So it's great now to kind of put the, the face with the name and get to know a little bit more about the services and um, how they can help. So thank you guys for joining us, Dr. Kuzan, Carmen, Taylor, and we'll let you guys take it away. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Um, yes, it, Dr. Kuzan and myself wanted to join Taylor today. And as we all work uh, together um, within student counseling services, and support Taylor from this end of the turnpike. Um, my role is um, as Assistant Director of Student Counseling Services, and with that, I overlook wellness. So I often support Taylor specifically in um, building um, a more robust presence and wellness and student well-being on that Tulsa campus. Yes, and I'm, as Carmen said before, and Lindsay did as well, I'm Craig Cruzan. I'm the director up at the HSC Student Counseling Services, and so I oversee both campuses and the student counseling programs on both campuses. Um, I am a licensed psychologist and mostly serve in a supervisory role in terms of all the counseling that actually gets done and making sure that that um, is the quality of services that we want and that we want you all to be able to experience. And so we're really grateful to have Taylor join us and that he's able to step into that Tulsa position and really um, be there in person. We've been able to provide services for Tulsa for a while remote. And so we're really excited to have Taylor here now as we start this semester to be able to actually provide those in-person services again. Um, Taylor, I'll turn it over to you for just a moment to introduce yourself as well. Thank you, Craig. Yeah, my, again, my name is Taylor Collins. I'm, I'm a local Tulsa, born and raised here, um, and I'm a licensed professional counselor. Been in mental health for about five years now. Um, I think I really can help people in terms of stress management, anxiety, challenging negative thoughts, and I'm already hitting the ground running, as they've said, with providing individual counseling to a lot of people here, and just excited to kind of tell everyone a little bit more about what we can offer. Well, to kind of just make it um, simple for sharing some of the basic, the, the most frequently asked questions we receive about student counseling services, um, I'll facilitate by kind of leading with some of what those um, common questions are and um, allow Taylor and Dr. Prezan to respond um, and then open it up to anyone that may have additional questions about our services or who we are. Um, you're welcome to like throw some questions into the chat as we go along or raise a hand and unmute, um, whatever you're most comfortable with. Um, Taylor, you just kind of kicked us off a little bit with um, an idea of what some of the services are that student counseling services can help with. Um, would you just expand a little bit more, please, on, you know, those range of concerns that you do support and the types of counseling available? Absolutely. Yeah, I was getting ahead a little myself a little bit. Um, yeah. But uh, a wide range of concerns, whether from adjustment issues, depression, anxiety, stress management, um, adjustment to these new circumstances, uh, loss, grief, um, as I alluded to earlier, challenging negative thought patterns, self-care, um, individual counseling, couples counseling, and group counseling, along with the uh, wellness events I'll be running and coordinating here. Great. Um, who's eligible for services and how much does it yeah, so anyone who is a student at the OU Tulsa campus can utilize counseling services. Uh, the cost is actually a part of your student fees, so you won't be paying any additional than you've already paid for. What we usually like to tell students is you have already paid for all the services. You might as well utilize those as mm -hmm. those needs come up. Uh, medical residents are also eligible to utilize our services confidentially and free of cost due to an arrangement with the medical college. So if you're a resident, feel free to come over as well, even though you're not technically a student. There is a fee for certain psychological assessments and batteries, and we can kind of go into that detail if anyone's interested in that. You just give us a call or shoot us an email, and we'd be happy to kind of talk you through what that would look like. How would um, a student schedule an appointment? 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, students can call, email, or drop by to make an appointment. Um, I'm located in the Schusterman Academic Center, or some people call it the administration building here on campus. Um, my phone number is 918-660-3109. You can email us at tulsacounseling at ou.edu. Uh, my personal email is taylor-collins at ouhse.edu, just as it's written in my name field there. Um, Basically, there is an intake process that we do online. It takes a little bit of time to do that paperwork, not too long. And then after that, we can schedule the in-person appointment from there. And then and the other thing, too, I'll mention is we do telehealth services, virtual counseling via Zoom as well. So just because you can't be on campus doesn't necessarily mean that you can't do counseling. So I try to be flexible and work with people's schedules. Yeah, great. Thank you. I wanted to add a little bit to that, too, of uh, one thing that is super convenient on all of our campuses is you can actually pull out your your like Sooner ID or the one card that you have and print it on the back of that is the, your local counseling numbers. And so it will have like the numbers for the Tulsa counseling there in Tulsa. Um, you should also have information for a lot of resources. So it's a great it's a great tool to just turn that over whenever you feel like you're in need of something and when there should be a lot of services kind of listed there that should be on hand for everybody. Uh, I wanted to expand for a moment on how staff and faculty kind of work with that. So we do not offer services to staff and faculty. It's just students and residents. Um, however, if staff and faculty, if you're ever concerned for any students, so you might be sitting with a student and you're worried about their mental health, um, to the point even sometimes where you're like, I don't want to leave them, like I'm, I'm worried about their safety and I want to make sure that they stay safe. Whatever that severity is or that intensity is, I want to clarify a couple of things on that. First off, um, staff and faculty cannot schedule appointments on students' behalf, so you can't call over and like schedule that and get them in the books. What you can do is you can let us know that there's a student of concern and we'll, we can be on the watch for that person. But what we really encourage you to do is to encourage the student to then give us that call or, or set up that appointment. We really want to leave that power in the student's hands as much as possible. If, again, it's an urgent situation and you're worried about this student you, and you really are concerned about their safety, in those circumstances, we, we would say go ahead and walk them over to the local counseling center there at the Schusterman Center. Bring them in and we'll make sure that they are taken care of at that point. And, and that way you don't have to feel like, one, you're not scheduling for them, we're not doing any of that, but you're also doing your due diligence, making sure that student stays safe. So please feel free to just walk them over and we will take care of that. Um, you can also give us a call beforehand. That's usually helpful if you shoot us a call saying, hey, I'm walking over student so-and-so. I'm going to be over there in 10 minutes. Can we kind of get that set up? And that gives us a chance to kind of get all the paperwork moving and have all that ready. So when the student shows up, that they can immediately uh, begin to move into that rather than us having to scramble there at the at the end. But if you don't have time for that or whatever the situation is, I definitely don't want you to hear, don't do it. Like, please still bring them over, even if you don't get a chance to to call them. Thank you. Taylor, you mentioned a minute ago where your office is located. Would you please share um, what your hours are? Absolutely. Yeah. And again, to uh, review, that's in the Schusterman's Academic Center in housed in the Tulsa Student Affairs office um, right near the gym. Uh, Jenny is the front office person. So her or anyone else there, if I'm not there, they can, you know, refer you to me and send an email on my behalf and get that set up. Uh, the hours are Monday through Friday, eight to five. We're closed public holidays and we're closed if there's inclement weather. Um, we're closed as well, but then obviously we have virtual and sometimes that can help with that as well. Thank you so much. So um, a common question that we you know we'll get from, from students, um, about counseling services is whether or not the appointments are private and confidential. It's a great question. The answer is yes and no, and that there it's yes, it is confidential, but there are exceptions to confidentiality. And so by law, we cannot let anyone know that you've utilized services unless under very specific circumstances detailed. And even in those situations, only relevant information to relevant individuals is released. Circumstances in which we must release information would include if you're a danger to yourself or others, if you talk about the abuse or neglect of a child or an incapacitated older adult, or if there's a court order. 
Um, and, or if there is a release of information where you give us specific written permission to release your records to a specified source. Yeah. Um, does anyone, is there any opportunity for receiving counseling services in a language other than English? Um, currently, our team of providers only provide services in English. Uh, however, there is a free resource that's available to students seeking mental health support in another language. It's called MySSP, and you can actually find more information about that on our website. We link to that, and that's a service provided through OU, where you can essentially get connected with a live counselor speaking uh, uh, your native language in that, and the, and the services would move through there instead of going through like Taylor or one of us here on campus. Thank you. We have a question here in the chat asking if our services are made by international students. And um, because as we are aware, most cultures are not friendly to counseling services. That Yes, go, go ahead, Taylor. I'll let you take that first. Go for it. Yeah, that's a great question. And I have to fully recognize my own, you know, my own limitations as I'm not going to understand that other perspective. But what I would say is universal is suffering. And I do understand that. And I try to not make assumptions. And I try to just ask questions and try to do my best to be culturally competent um, with whatever background my clients come from. Because there, I've already noticed a lot of cl clients are already coming from very ba varied backgrounds. And I think it's my ethical responsibility to try to be culturally sensitive and competent. And I, I try to do my best when I do work with, you know, students from other cultures. And to address the question on the advertising and making sure that they're aware of that, we do um, want to reach out to our international students. Um, we tend to work, one of the ways you can find that is we, we advertise to all students through like our daily news and things like that. And so we want to make sure that anytime we're having events that that's out there. We also will oftentimes partner with some of our international student organizations and things to be able to provide those services. And so that's definitely something that we're sensitive to. And we have a high number of international students on, on our campuses. And so wanting to make sure that we are having conversations that help break down maybe some of those barriers that might prevent people from wanting to come in and seeking that mental health, while also being sensitive to the fact that other cultures view mental health differently than maybe we might view the cult how we view it here in this culture. And, and when an international student comes in for therapy, we do our utmost to be sensitive to that difference, that there are maybe some different views of how they think of healthy functioning versus unhealthy functioning and so forth. And so we really are focused a lot on what's going to be helpful for you to be able to adjust and do the best that you can while you're here at OU. And that's really our goal. And so we try to work within those cultural means as much as we can. Thank you. Um, another question that we have received is, um, or a statement perhaps more, if it's Oklahoma suicides have climbed to the highest point since 2006. Are there any comments? Uh, Craig, I know you just recently actually addressed, um, you just conducted a suicide training and addressed some of the most recent data. Um, would you please respond? Yeah, I'd be happy to. And that's an accurate observation. I mean, suicides have gone up, I think, across the nation, really. That's the, there's a quite a mental health um, movement going on right now in terms of a lot more people kind of realizing that they're needing mental health services. Um, right, One of the statistics that we just gave, I just did a presentation last week called Talk Saves Lives. And that is one of the ways that we're trying to combat it. It's not the only way, but it's one of our biggest steps towards that is we're trying to make sure that every student, staff, and faculty member while they're at OU, sits down for one of those Talk Saves Lives presentations at some point in their time here so that they can learn what some of those signs are for suicide and have that awareness to be able to intervene even at a non-clinical level of just being able to have a conversation and recognize what those signs are for suicide and be a support to our peers. Um, but you're absolutely right. The numbers have gone up, uh, as I said in that presentation last week. They've almost doubled since 2020. And so I think right now something to like, it's around 85% of students on college campuses across America report that they are having significant mental health issues. That's huge. That's a large number. Um, and roughly 
50 or 60 percent of them report having significant issues where they actually would need counseling or medication or those sort of interventions. And so, again, that's a lot higher than it was in years past, and it's considerably higher than it is in the general community. And so we're very aware of that and very sensitive to that. And it's one of the reasons why I want to do talks like this to get people to understand that we are here and we're available and we're here to support and we want to take down as many barriers as we can. And one of those barriers is just not knowing who we are. And so part of the goal here was to put our faces in front of everybody and let them know that we are people and kind of give them our heart in this, which is to, to be here for students and help that growing need um, for mental health. Thank you. I think that's just a great segue into, um, you know, one of the other questions we had here is, you know, what is the student wellness program? Absolutely. Great segue. And that is programming fo focused on the holistic well-being in the components of physical, intellectual, emotional, social, occupational, and spiritual life that are all going to factor in into our well-being and could be used preventatively in nature. Um, programs like the work-life uh, management workshop we did earlier this week. And then next week, we're going to do one on imposterism. We did the Talk Saves Lives. Um, we're going to do one on Ready, Set Boundaries and professional interview skills and optimal performance. Different workshops that are, can help address the different domains of wellness that can be preventative in nature so that people don't get to the, that point where they're, that SI is such an issue and they come in and address those mental health concerns early and often, whether it be in counseling or whether it be through the wellness workshops and or in combination of it. There was a question earlier talking about international students and it kind of was indicating, you know, some different views and some hesitancies that people have about coming in for counseling and addressing mental health directly sometimes and being able to kind of acknowledge mental health struggles. And that was one of the reasons why our wellness program was actually built, was we were aware that there's going to be a significant number of students who may never actually come in for counseling. Um, they may be at the point where they need it. They may not. They may just be progressing there and kind of subclinical. But we know regardless, that there's going to be a number of students who don't come in for that. And so we wanted to create a wellness program that has wellness presentations and topics and discussions on a regular basis, ideally a weekly basis, so that we could meet that need for those students who may not come in for counseling, but might show up for a free lunch and a conversation around some topics that are of interest to them. And that way there's a little bit more of, there's a step away from that being directly like we're talking about counseling and mental health, which sometimes has some more stigma around it than just coming to a presentation on like boundaries or coming to a presentation on how to have optimal performance in your academics and things like that. So Taylor currently has it set up already where there's hybrid programming available on Mondays, as mentioned, but but um, staff, faculty, you know, anyone that may, may notice, even leaders in student groups, that may notice that um, there's a need among a class or a student group for one of these talks to be directly um, hosted, um, you're welcome to reach out also to, to Taylor um, to ask about guest presentations, discussions that can take place in those meetings. It's something that we really enjoy doing as well. So this really covers the scope of what our most commonly asked questions are about student counseling services. Um, ah, any plans here? We have another question in the comment. Thank you so much. I was just about to open it up. If there are any additional questions, please go ahead and throw them in the chat or unmute yourself if you'd like. Um, we have one now here. It says, any plans to have Taylor make regular short appearances in classes to introduce his services and friendly face to the majority of students, especially the weekend classes? Yeah, so those, one of the things that we actually are rolling out, um, I'll grant it, sometimes it feels slower than maybe what we want it to, just given the fact that this is a large campuses, right? And there's a lot of people to meet and greet with. But one of the plans is for actually during this fall and spring semester, this first year that Taylor's here, to be able to get to know the campus and going out and talking to different staff and faculty and students. And uh, we haven't had met specific plans yet to go to different specific classes, but that can definitely be part of that conversation. That's definitely something that we do at times at the HSC. I can speak to that. If we get invitations, right, where professors yeah. will invite us mm -hmm. to come over and talk. And so then we can take that opportunity to do that. Uh, we also will tend to 
have our counselors show up during like orientations and those kind of moments so that people get a chance to see Taylor's face and to see our faces and get to know that we're people again, like the whole point of this. And so while I don't know that we have a specific plan to hit like every single class that's taking place, because that would be a lot, we're probably pulling a lot of Taylor's time. We definitely want to be open to uh, invitations in the different classes and professors and and so if there's anybody listening who that's the thing that you'd be interested in, you think that'd be helpful, definitely reach out um, either to your professor or even to us directly and kind of have those conversations. We obviously need a professor's permission or a program's permission to come in. And so there are some steps in that. Uh, but, you know, that's a great way of getting people to to know who Taylor is and what our services are. And, and even I, just I, uh, I did yeah, do some ahead. of that a little bit when we uh, earlier when we passed out cookies actually to night classes um, where OU Tulsa kind of introduced themselves, um, like the student affairs office did specifically. And as a part of student affairs, I definitely did a little bit for the, some of the night classes in the past. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's just kind of like you said, case by case, right? That's a great example, Taylor, of us already making some steps in that yeah, direction. Absolutely. So the question here is um, whether BID is another good resource for faculty staff to use if they're concerned about student mental health. And um, I don't mind actually responding to this. I, I serve on BID at HSC. And um, this is actually a great resource for students too, not just staff and faculty. So for those who aren't aware, um, BID stands for Behavioral Intervention Team. And it's a team um, of individuals that serves in a caring manner for students, staff, and faculty. Um, and there's a website we can actually, we could probably actually pull up Tulsa campus's referral site um, and get that in the chat real quick as well. Um, but in, on that referral site, you just re put in a, a referral for care um, when observing that a colleague or a student is presenting in a way that concerns you, whether in regards to maybe they're de-escalating in their well-being, moving away from their baseline, um, whether or not you actually think they're at a, at a level to where they may be a harm to themselves or others. Um, we really, we, the whole point of this is to be able to um, provide care and support ahead of time. Thank you very much, Taylor. Um, for putting that in the chat. Um, so that again, kind of like what Taylor was mentioning earlier, that it doesn't get to that point, you know? And so it's um, a, a team of individuals who will, will connect with the person um, that the referral form is made for and providing all sorts of direction to the resources available for the university um, of care that might help them in the adjustment of that. Um, so in, you know, I've had students too, where, you know, it's, a matter of maybe maybe actually I have a student coming to counseling and they're sharing with me deep concern for a roommate of theirs who um, is repeatedly putting themselves into risky situations. You know, well that sharing that with me doesn't put me in a position to be able to support that person. But if that student is concerned, wants to get support for that roommate of theirs, doing a bit referral is an excellent way to um, bring attention to people in leadership that their roommate may need some additional support. Yeah, and that really is the goal is to provide that support around the campus. So the campus kind of comes around a student or a staff member or a faculty member who's in need of a little bit of support uh, to be able to function here. And, that, and that's the goal of the bit. I just want to clarify really quick that the bit is not a crisis program. And so if you have somebody who is in urgent need and they are, again, you feel like they are not safe to be left alone. Um, that is not a bit referral at that point. That would be walking them over to the counseling center um, or potentially calling 988, right? The new hotline for that and being able to connect to resources in that way. So a bit is usually a thing where you're going to get a response within 24 to 48 hours as opposed to an immediate response. So Lindsay, I know we're at our, our time here. Um, and I, and I want to be mindful of that. Are there any additional questions that anyone has or things that we maybe, even um, Dr. Prezan and Taylor, anything that we've not spoken to yet that we want to leave everyone with? No, I appreciate everyone taking the time to be here today and for um, Taylor and Carmen to, for helping us have this conversation and Lindsay and Kaylee for putting it on and hosting us. So thank, thank you, everyone. You. Yes, thank you so much. A lot of great uh, discussion information. We'll be sending the follow-up email. Um, so some of the stuff you have um, provided, hopefully 
include some of those links too so people can um, jump to that quickly and um, really help again spread that awareness have that information handy and um, excited to see Taylor continue to, to connect with the Tulsa campus and is such a great resource to have uh, here with the OU family so appreciate all of you so so much and um, have a wonderful rest of your day and of course, uh, if there's something you want to reach out with Taylor or any of the, the counseling team um, af after today's session, we'll make sure and have that contact information in the follow-up email as well. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Thanks, Thanks everyone. You.